riveting action across League One last weekend with a eight goal thriller between Shrewsbury and Crawley and a six goal thriller between Rotherham and Peterborough. We're now looking ahead to what is this round 12 of the League One calendar and there's some big games coming up. We've got Wickham Wanderers facing up against Peterborough. You've got Bolton Wanderers and Burton Albion going head to head. Stockport head to Charlton and Wrexham head to Rotherham United. We're going to go through all the games in this video. We're going to take a look at all the important details details behind each fixture so if you have not done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button we're trying to hit the sub goal of 1500 by uh, new year so make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest content well here we have the first fixture of the weekend it's on Thursday night instead of Friday, uh, Sky Sports Football Live TV, Shrewsbury Town take on Exeter at the Crowd Meadow. It's going to be a really, really interesting one for me. Exeter have done excellently so far this season, put up some really, really good performances and some that I'm actually quite surprised about. And Shrewsbury Town, on the other hand, not quite hitting the form that they probably would have wanted this early on in the season, but a really, really big result uh, just recently versus Crawley Town in that eight goal thriller, which included a card and some late goals it was an absolute amazing one to watch and if you do look at the previous five results for both of these two sides Shrewsbury Town picking up just one win in five two draws versus Rotherham and Bolton their two defeats came against Stockport County and Birmingham City two teams which you cannot complain about being beaten by two very good teams in this division extra on the other hand they're unbeaten in their previous five four wins one draw the draw coming against Wigan uh, the wins coming against Stevenage Spurs, Leighton Orient and Cambridge United. Now, if we do just take a brief look at the league table, Exeter currently sit in 7th position. A win could take them as high as 4th if results go their way. Shrewsbury are sitting in 21st, but a win could take them well out of that relegation zone and put them into 19th position. I do think this is going to be a very, very interesting game. There's been a lot of interesting aspects between these two sides so far. Obviously, Shrewsbury Town not picking up the results they require, but Exeter City are certainly on that winning run at the start of the season. Reading and Crawley Town then go head-to-head -head at the Select Car Leasing Stadium. This is another one on Sky Sports, 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. Now, if we look at the previous five results, neither of these two sides are putting in results which... Uh, you'd necessarily want to see from your team. Reading picking up three defeats uh, versus Rotherham United, Bolton Wanderers and Leighton Orient. But they were able to pick up six points versus Huddersfield Town and Burton Albion. Crawley, on the other hand, five defeats in a row. And I'm sure uh, it's actually a few more than that. I don't think they've picked up a point in quite a while. It's been very disappointing for Crawley since the opening couple of fixtures where... I thought they came away in a really good position. I thought they were doing really, really well. Uh, but ultimately, it's just slipped away from them. All five defeats uh, in their previous five. Shrewsbury Town, Wimbledon, Wickham Wanderers, Mansfield and Bolton picking up those wins. If we do look at the league table, you've got Red in there in 17th, a game less than everybody else. Uh, three points could take them as high as sixth position uh, obviously a defeat and that they'll stay where they are pretty much Crawley Town a win would take them out of the relegation zone but seven losses one draw two wins can't really see them picking up a win in this one I'm going to go for a Reading victory I think it'll be 2-1 Peterborough United head to Adams Park then in what is going to be a really, really important fixture for the posh. They've not necessarily uh, hit the levels that some would have expected this season. They're certainly one of my promotion favourites uh, early on in pre-season when I did my predictions video. But Wickham Wanderers have absolutely flew out the blocks. They've had a really, really good start to the season and they've put in some really, really good performances. Now, if we look at the previous five for these two sides, Wickham Wanderers beating Crawley Town 1-0, a 2 2-2 draw with Barnsley, a 2-1 win over Bristol Rovers, a 2-1 defeat versus Aston Villa, not something you can really complain about, and a 2-1 win over Cambridge United. Now, if we go through the Peter results, two, uh, three, well, a 3-2 defeat to Birmingham City, a 3-0 defeat to Wigan Athletic, two wins uh, against Stevenage in a row, 2-1 uh, and 2-0, and then the draw versus Rotherham, which... Some will say it was a battling victory uh, because they went ahead, they then went behind and then got back into it. But I think when you go ahead so early, you've got to try and hold on to the game, especially at home. And 
I just felt like they struggled to do that in this one. And uh, I do think uh, Peterborough will get better as the season goes on. They've got a lot of young talent, a lot of players who are coming uh, to the front finally. And uh, I think the players like Kwame Poku and Ricky J. Jones have got a serious job to do at stepping up in this team. Now, if we do look at the league table, Wickham Wanderers are sitting fifth after nine games on 17 points. A win could take them up to second. Now, Peterborough United are sitting down there in 12th. A win could put them into the playoff positions. They're not that far away. The leading pack sort of contains 18 teams who are sort of within nine points of each other. So it's a really good uh, start to the League One season overall. I think uh, a lot of stuff can still happen. And obviously, we're only on round 12. A lot of teams haven't even played uh, 11 games yet. So uh, there's a long way still to go in this one. And I certainly think Peterborough and Wickham will be in that playoff picture come the end of the season. Barnsley head to Bloomfield Road as they look to bounce back from back-to-back -back defeats versus Huddersfield Town. They haven't won in four games, which was a win against Burton Albion, a team really struggling in the division this year. Blackpool are on a run of two without, without win for the first time since Steve Bruce took charge. But they have shown the form that they can put in and how well they can perform under this new management. They they took three wins on the bounce at the start of this five-game run. 2-1 versus Charlton, 2-0 versus Huddersfield and 3-0 versus uh, Burton Albion. Then a 1-1 draw with Lincoln City and a 2-0 defeat to Mansfield, which... This season, uh, a defeat to Mansfield is not a disappointing one. They've started excellently so far. Obviously, Barnsley, those two back-to-back -back defeats to Huddersfield, a draw with Rick Wickham and a draw with Stockport. Now, if we do look at the league table, these two sides are in very, very similar positions. Identical in terms of wins, losses and draws. Uh, and pretty much similar on uh, the plus-minus for goal difference. Uh, both teams... Have had differing spells across the course of the season. Obviously, Blackpool didn't start too great, then went on a really good run. Barnsley started okay, had a bit of a dip, came back into it, and have just uh, gone three without a victory. Now, uh, it is going to be a very interesting one. A win could take both of these two sides up to fourth place should results go their way. I think both of these sides are in for a really tough test this weekend. I think it's going to be a nil nil draw. Burton Albion still searching for that first victory of the league campaign as they travel to the Tough Sheet Community Stadium to face Bolton Wanderers. Now, Bolton Wanderers haven't had the season that you'd probably expect of a Bolton Wanderers side, but they've certainly turned a corner over recent weeks. And uh, Burton Albion, on the other hand, just have not been anywhere. And I am starting to feel a little bit sorry for the management team over there. And it's not necessarily for the want of trying. It's more they've been put in a position where they have to play a certain style of football. Now, Bolton Wanderers in their previous five, a 5-1 defeat to Arsenal in the Cup. 2-0 versus Crawley, 4-2 versus Northampton, a 2-2 draw with Shrewsbury Town and a 1-1 draw with Aston Villa Academy. Burton Albion, as you can see, five defeats on the trot against Barnsley, Notts County, Blackpool, Reading and Bristol Rovers. They'll be looking to turn this around. They've spent, a, well, they have spent a fair chunk of money this summer and they've bought in some really, really good players and it just doesn't seem to be clicking yet. Uh, they've completely changed the philosophy and the, the style and uh, They've pretty much changed the entire club at Burton Albion over the course of three months and it hasn't quite gone to plan. Now we look at Bolton Wanderers, they're in that leading pack of 18. A win would take them up to fifth position should results go their way. Uh, and obviously Burton Albion, a win wouldn't take them outside the relegation zone, but it would certainly give them a boost of confidence to beat a team that's currently on a four game unbeaten run. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm looking to the likes of uh, Danny Orsi and players like that to step up. If we just go and uh, look at the squad at Burton Albion there's some big players in here there's some players who really need to step up um, and I think we all know that they should be doing better than they are but unfortunately they're just unable to do that you look at uh, Danny Orsi needs to pick up uh, what I know he's been getting a lot of stick recently but as one of the players who has m the, pretty much the most touches on the pitch for Burton Albion I think it's a little bit too much so we're a little bit stuck with Burton Albion at the moment I do think they'll turn it around let me know your thoughts down in the comments Wigan Athletic travel to Cambridge as Cambridge look to finally pick up some points this season. They've had a really, really difficult start. Pretty similar to Burton in a sense of being really, really poor, but they've not quite been able to even show signs of anything. And I think Cambridge are missing a few big pieces. I think it's one of those where 
They've gone through a little bit of an overhaul. They've got some good players in the squad, but ultimately they're not quite performing together. Wigan Athletic, on the other hand, five without defeat, two wins uh, in that versus Peterborough and Carlisle. Three draws, nil-nils uh, versus Stockport, Exeter and Stevenage. Wigan love a nil-nil this season. Cambridge, five defeats in a row versus Charlton, Wickham, Lincoln, Rotherham and Exeter. If we do go ahead and take a look at the league table, you'll see Wigan Athletic sitting there in 16th position. Four draws this season, all in their last five games. They've uh, been on a... A pretty uh, average run, really. They've picked up, uh, what's that, seven points in their last five games, which isn't awful. It's mid-table, uh, non-relegation form. So uh, if they keep that up across the course of the season, they'll do all right. Now, uh, Cambridge, on the other hand, just one point in nine games. They've not necessarily been a terrible team and they've created uh, opportunities and had chances to win games, pretty similar to Burton in that sense, but they've just been unable to keep them out the other end and they've been really, really poor um, and there is some big players in that Cambridge United squad. You look at the likes of Corey Smith, who uh, I think has probably been one of their better players this season. Cambridge fans, you can let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But this one, it's going to be really difficult to see past Wigan. But it wouldn't surprise me if this is a nil-nil draw. We know what Wigan are like and Cambridge struggle to score. You see only two goals in their previous five fixtures. It's going to be a really, really interesting one. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest EFL and Derby County content coming to the channel. We're getting ever closer to that November international break. I know we've only just come back from one, but I believe there's six or seven games up until that next one. It's going to be really interesting to see how things shake out. I, th I really do think League One's been a very interesting start to the year with just uh, some teams playing 11, some teams only playing nine. It, it's going to be really shocking up when we come into that November December period so make sure you're around on the channel to stay tuned for that we're going to be covering every single game in the championship in league one so make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell also take a look at the memberships as well uh, to be able to keep these videos going we've got to be able to make it sustainable uh, so make sure you check out those memberships and we'll look at doing members only videos and things like that once we get some of those on the board so make sure you hit that subscribe button check out the memberships hit the like button let me know your thoughts in the comments and let's get back to it. Back into it then as Stockport travel to the Valley as they take on a Charlton Athletic side looking to continue after their recent important victory over Birmingham City and what a brilliant win it was for Nathan Jones and his Charlton Athletic side. Stockport on the other hand are on the back of a three game unbeaten run after losing to Leighton Orient 4-1 just a few weeks ago. Charlton went on a three game losing spell so it is possible to beat both of these two sides. The two wins coming against Birmingham and Charlton. Uh, Birmingham and Cambridge, sorry. Stockport, on the other hand, the two wins coming against uh, Shrewsbury Town and Everton's Academy. The defeat against Leighton Orient. Barnsley and Wigan with the two draws, as I mentioned just a moment ago. Wigan Athletic are certainly one of those teams that love a draw this season. I've really enjoyed Stockport this season. I got a lot of stick at the start of the season because, and rightfully so in a sense of, I thought Stockport would be one of the teams down near that relegation zone. And I think they've done excellently so far to be in the position they're in, obviously. As mentioned a million times already, we're only early on in the campaign. It is round 12. I think at some point last year, Port Vale were up near the top of the table. Uh, if you go back to the season before that, there was uh, periods of like Cambridge, Exeter and all teams like that being up near the top but finishing down in that bottom half near the relegation zone. So Stockport have done excellently. They've got some really good players in there. Louis Barry is one that you should definitely keep an eye on. I don't think he'll be at Stockport for long. Uh, Charleston Athletic have obviously done excellently so far this season. They probably want a little bit more. Obviously, those three defeats in a row were really disappointing for Nathan Jones and his men. Uh, Stockport sitting in sixth place, 16 points. They can rise as high as fourth. Charlton also on 16 points. Uh, they can also rise as high as fourth. But obviously, the big thing to note is five, six of the top seven all have a game in hand on those around them, uh, even two on the likes of Peterborough and Rotherham. So, it's obviously a massive campaign at the moment. I think Charlton and Stockport, it's going to be a very evenly matched contest. I think it's going to be 1-0 either way. I can't say which way, but I think it's going to be 1-0 either way. 
Huddersfield Town face up against Bristol Rovers at home as they look to go for a third straight win. Now, they had a really tough period just a few weeks ago. As you can see, the three back-to-back -back defeats. I think it was a four run of defeats. Uh, you can correct me down in the comments, Huddersfield Town fans. But it's one of those for me where I think Huddersfield are a really good side. I think they just need to not have the complacency. I think they were unlucky in some of the games, do not get me wrong, but it's one of those for me where I certainly think uh, they can be in that promotion picture this season. Bristol Rovers, uh, only two defeats in their last five, which is exactly the same, but most recently a 4-0 defeat to Swindon Town, 2-1 defeat to Wickham Wanderers and 3-2 to Peterborough United. So it's an interesting one heading into this one at the John Smith Stadium. Huddersfield Town are in that leading pack in ninth position, five wins, Five defeats, 15 points. A win can take them up to fourth. You look at Bristol Rovers, they're one of the teams right at the bottom of that pack. Obviously, uh, there's teams around them with a game in hand or they have a game in hand on them, but three points could take them up to uh, sixth position. Obviously, results have to go their way. It's one of those for me. I think this one's going to be a really interesting one, but I personally cannot see past Huddersfield Town. I think it's going to be 3-0 Huddersfield. Birmingham City tasted defeat for the first time in League One just a couple of weeks ago as they faced up against Charlton Athletic. Now, they've been on brilliant form this season. Now, they face up against Lincoln City in this one who have also been on a really, really good run. Uh, obviously, Birmingham City returned with a 4-0 win versus Shrewsbury Town uh, heading into the international break. I believe that's the EFL Trophy game. Um, but the 1-0 defeat to Charlton is one that will stick out in their minds and one they won't want to feel again. They're certainly the best team in this division and uh, the results speak for themselves. It's going to be interesting to see how this league does shake up. Obviously, the three wins before that was versus Huddersfield, uh, Peterborough and Rotherham. Lincoln City, on the other hand, five unbeaten, two draws versus Blackpool and Wigan. A 2-0 win against Cambridge and two 2-1 wins versus Leighton Orient and Grimsby Town EFL Trophy game. Don't forget that one. I really like Lincoln City. I think they're in a really good position. You look at them, they're fourth in the division at the moment. Uh, only four points behind Birmingham City. Uh, obviously, a game in hand on Wrexham, which could take them ahead. A win could obviously take them to 21 points anyway. Uh, it's going to be an absolutely massive game for these two sides. Two of the, the early front pack, uh, if you will. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot of talk around Birmingham City. The money they've spent... Uh, the players they've bought in, the players they've got hold of and things like that. And I do think they're in a really good position to go and win this division at a canter. And I do think that is what they should do. But I think there's plenty of opportunities here for these teams to go and uh, take it to Birmingham City. And I think Lincoln City, it's pretty similar to that game of Charlton, which Lincoln City are going to do, in my opinion, uh, where they'll sit in, they'll defend well, they'll hit them on the counter and they'll create high quality chances. It's going to be really interesting this one. Uh, I think if I'm going to put a result on it, I'm going to say 2-0 Birmingham, but I think there's an opportunity that this could be a 1-0 uh, to Lincoln City, a counter-attack or set-piece goal. Let me know your thoughts down below. Mansfield Town then back at home for the second time in a row as they look to take their fifth win in a row. I think it would be their sixth win in a row in the division uh, as they face up against Stevenage who are off the back of two back-to-back -back defeats. Now, Stevenage have been uh, up and down this season and I believe they're in that leading pack. Uh, if we look at their previous five, it's two defeats, both versus Peterborough, a win over Wrexham, a win over Charlton and a draw to Wigan Athletic. What have I told you about Wigan? They love a draw. Uh, Mansfield Town, four wins on the trot uh, versus Blackpool, Crawley, Northampton and Shrewsbury Town. A defeat to Bradford City. I think that's the EFL Trophy. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. If we look at the league table, Mansfield Town, nine games played, 20 points. A win would take them to top of the division. It's going to be absolutely massive to see what uh, Mansfield can do this season. Nigel Clough has done an excellent job there so far, especially in this campaign. Five wins on the trot in League One. Uh, if we go down to Stevenage, obviously uh, their previous five isn't as good. Two defeats, a draw and two wins. Sitting down there in 14th position, a win could take them as high as fifth place. We'll have to see what happens with this one. I personally cannot see past Nigel Clough getting that sixth league win in a row. Make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I think this one is going to be a 2-1 to Mansfield. Uh, let, I think... Mansfield have just gone from strength to strength recently. I'm not sure what's clicked for them, but Nigel Clough has really got them going. Northampton Town face up against Leighton Orient then at the Sixfield Stadium as they look to pick up 
another win in League One. They look to get themselves back into that mid-table picture, which realistically, if we look at the league table, they're neither team are really in that mid-table picture but they're not that far away this is more of like the relegation scrap this bottom six here which is really interesting because I really thought Leighton Orient would be one of those teams to surprise us this season now if we look at the previous five results uh, there's two wins in there for Northampton versus Notts County in the cup and versus uh, Huddersfield Town three defeats on a, in the row though with Wrexham, Bolton and uh, Northampton and Mansfield, sorry, all picking up wins uh, against Northampton. Later on, on the other hand, a 1-1 draw with Colchester, 0-0 with Wrexham, 2-2 with Peterborough, and two defeats versus Lincoln City and Exeter. It's not looking great for Leighton Orient down the bottom, uh, but it's one of those where we'll have to see what does happen. You look at uh, the league table here, and uh, obviously... Two teams down that bottom end, 19th place for Leighton Orient, 20th place for Northampton, both sitting on eight points. Goal difference, the only thing separating the two sides. Obviously, Northampton do have that game in hand, which a win for that would take them up to 11 points, just two points behind Bristol City. Uh, Bristol Rovers, sorry. Uh, Leighton Orient, obviously a win would do the same, but obviously they don't have that game in hand. So it's one of those for me where uh, these two sides aren't where they want to be and haven't started the season to the same level of where they want to be. But it's something which we'll have to see if that changes across the course of the campaign. Finally then, Wrexham face up against Rotherham United at the New York Stadium. It's going to be very interesting this one. Rotherham are on a five-game unbeaten run right now with uh, a draw most recently against Peterborough United. After coming from behind to going ahead and then going uh, to level pegging again, it's going to be a very interesting one this one between uh, these two sides. Rotherham also beat Newcastle United, Reading and Cambridge as well as a draw to Shrewsbury Town. Wrexham on the other hand, Back-to-back -back wins versus Northampton and Wolves Academy. But defeat to Stevenage. Draw with Leighton Orient and a 2-1 win over Crawley. These two sides are in very different positions. Wrexham right at the top of the division. Uh, challenging Birmingham City of all teams. Obviously, they have played that extra game. And it will be important to make sure that that gap doesn't get any bigger uh, before that game in hand is played by Birmingham. Rotherham, on the other hand, are within that mid-table pack, the second filling of this leading pack on 14 points. But they have played uh, 11 games like a lot of those teams around them. So realistically, yes, a win could take them up to 17th position. But all of these teams that have 10 games, 9 games, would all have the opportunity to then jump ahead. It's one of those for me. I think it's going to be a really, really interesting one to look at across the course of the campaign. Obviously, if you just take a brief look at the league table as we scroll through it here after reviewing all the fixtures... It's one of those where it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this closes out across the course of this weekend. Now, we've been through all of the League One fixtures. Uh, 12 games in total, finally a full weekend of fixtures and it's going to be an absolutely massive one. I think there's some really important games in there. I think mansfield Stevenage is a massive one for Mansfield. Wrexham Rotherham is also a hugely important game for me. Uh, you look at the Bo uh, Burton Albion versus Bolton game, that's going to be huge because Burton Albion really need to get off the mark so far this season. Now, if you have not done so already, you can see in the top corner, the sub goal is 1,500. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell make sure you check out memberships as well uh, really help supporting the channel and things like that make sure you hit the like button as well so you can help push these videos to brand new audiences uh, tried a few things on the channel recently and hasn't quite gone to plan but uh, make sure you stick around let me know your thoughts on the content down in the comments and i'll catch you in my next video